So sometimes you want to compare models and see how they are the same and different from each other. We're using the model from the previous video in this video, but a real world example of this that we've actually done in our business is we have gone into a hospital and scanned a person's arm and after they've had surgery. We then went back an hour later, scanned the arm again, and then went back six hours and then 12 hours later, and the doctors were able to compare the scans to see where the arm was swelling after a surgery to see if they needed to make any changes uh, to what they did. So we're starting with an object right here that I'm, I named larger. I'm going to click on the duplicate button to make a copy. This one I'm going to double click in here and name it smaller. So we're just going to be working on the smaller one right now. So the larger one, we're going to turn the eyeball off so we're not looking at it. So I'm going to go into the Sculpt tool to Brushes to Inflate, and I'm going to make some changes here. So I'm going to inflate maybe half of the lip of this object, and then if you hold down the Control or Command key on a Mac, I'm going to do the opposite of inflation, which is deflation. So I'm going to do some deflation on some of these, maybe some inflation on some of these, and I'm going to make a big change over here with just the draw command. Great. So I'm going to turn back on visibility of the other objects. So you can see that there's a little bit of changes that Mesh Mixer is showing, but we can actually do a lot better analysis using the new tools in Mesh Mixer 2.9. Now click on the larger and then hold down shift and click on the smaller. We get some objects here in Analysis and Edit, we are going to be going down to Analysis for this to start off with Deviation. So Mesh Mixer will think about it and say that there is a maximum deviation here of one millimeter between one and the other. If we click on this object, we actually get a selection on the object for what those are. We can see that the two changes are there. If we click on deviation again and bring down this slider, we can start to see that the changes I made weren't actually that big. This is actually a pretty small model, so we're talking about two tenths of a millimeter, but we get some idea where the objects are different. And I talk about this more in the deviation tools in the reference section, but this will tell you where the objects are different between one and the other. And if you look at this, it's not showing the outside, it's actually showing the inside one, the smaller one. The reason for that is that I clicked on the smaller one first. If we click on the larger one first and then the smaller one and run deviation, you can see that it starts to shade the outside one. So what's to take away from that is the one that you click on first is the one that you want to get the information about. So in this case, I clicked on the larger one first and then the smaller one. The first one I clicked on is the one that is being shaded. So as I click on those little bubbles, it will actually select the areas that are deviated, allow you to create a face group from them for further modification. And also what that means is that that is the boundary between the larger and the smaller one on the inside at that deviation. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to clear this selection, click on larger, smaller, go down to analysis, and we can also talk about clearance. So clearance is, and we can move this up, the clearance between two objects completely. So that doesn't really work all that much, but it shows, if we zoom in right here, the clearance between the two, where we're talking about the minimum clearance between the two. So this is kind of like the inverse of the deviation. It shows how much clearance. If you were trying to ensure that you had 
at least 0.2 millimeters between the two different objects, this would be red. In fact, a lot of this would be red, is that you're not within that tolerance. It looks like you have clearance around, not even here, maybe 0 0.02 right? So even downside of here, where I didn't do any of the tools, there's no clearance at all. The way you can also see this is if we click on smaller and transform this and just move it over here, we can run the clearance between these two as well. So it computes the clearance between the two, totally fine. And now once we get to around 1.2 millimeters, we start to get some issues. If we really, really, really needed, let's say two millimeters clearance between these two, this would not cut it. That's why it's red there. So we would need to move one of these away from each other a little bit more. If we click on bi-directional, I also talk about that. It also does the clearance on the other side and would affect the other part of the mesh as well. So this is some ways of understanding how to compare and contrast different objects by looking under analysis when you have multiple objects here under deviation and clearance.